Well, researchers say they've confirmed the first case of someone being infected with COVID-19 for a second time. The discovery in Hong Kong suggests that people who get the disease and recover may not have immunity for very long. Well, Dr Sarah Pitt is a virologist at the University of Brighton and a fellow of the Institute of Biomedical Science. Good evening. Thanks so much for talking to us on the programme. Good evening. Good evening. So, uh, for, on the face of it, this sounds pretty worrying um, and scary, is it? No, it's what we expect. We know that people who get um, coronavirus infections in general don't necessarily have lasting uh, immunity. And there have been um, studies, quite detailed studies, well, studies where they've actually done a detailed study of uh, a winter it was in New York, it was a couple of years ago, and they studied um, common cold coronaviruses and they found that people were coming back two or three times. The same patient was coming back with a coronavirus infection two or three times in a, in a winter season. So it's not a particular surprise. The interesting thing about this is that the patient was um, very ill the first time and in hospital. And so they've got, you know, quite a lot of information about the virus which she had at the time. But then um, the second time has been picked up just recently was when he was going through an airport and he was just routinely tested, didn't have any symptoms, wasn't ill, but they found he had the virus. And then they were able to take it back to the laboratory and sequence it and found that it was a different strain of the virus, which is which is interesting and proves that you can get reinfected. But so it isn't you, you can, but you, so you can get reinfected, which, which, mm. just, which doesn't sound great. But is the fact that uh, they were asymptomatic the second time, is that what's positive about this? Yes. I mean, I, and again, I think that's, that's the um, interesting thing and that's the thing that we probably expect. I don't... Th uh, that th th there must be... You might have some sort of... Um, a little bit of protection from your from the previous infection yeah. but of course with the proviso that nobody really knows it's a brand new virus we're basing quite a lot of assumptions on what we know about the pre the other coronaviruses that have been around for a bit longer but um nobody can be really sure about any of it but of that's course. what it certainly looks like of course and one thing i'm i'm interested in is obviously it's great news if you you have it and then the second time you have it you're asymptomatic which is what we're presuming from this case but there's still a problem there, isn't it? Because if you have it and you're asymptomatic, presumably we don't know whether you can go around spreading it. Well, I mean, we do know that if you are asymptomatic, but you're actually able to, the virus can be picked up in a test. That means you're able to spread the virus to other people. So what it does mean is that just because you've had the virus and some people have had it and they've had an, they either know they've had it because they were in hospital or they had a test at the time, or there are other people who have now gone and had an antibody test because they had symptoms earlier on in, in the year, they shouldn't assume that they are n um, not going to get it again. And they also shouldn't assume that they're not going to be able to spread it. Well, that, so sounds, that, that, sounds, like really, that yeah. sounds like really disappointing, really bad news, because I remember at the start of this outbreak that there was certainly hope that once you'd had it, A, you wouldn't get it again and you wouldn't be able to spread it. But... But that's just not true. This sounds like a pretty depressing result out of Hong Kong. It, it doesn't. It isn't depressing. It's what, what I've always expected all along. So because, because of the nature of coronaviruses, what we know about coronaviruses, we know this sort of thing would happen. Um, and, but what it does say is that everybody should be doing social distancing. Everybody should be wearing masks, um, to, which we're wearing masks to protect each other as much as ourselves. And just because you've had the infection, you either think you did or you know you did, doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't be doing the, the, the um, precautions that everybody else is doing. That's and right. I think that just... Yeah, so that, that's, that's absolutely fascinating. And thank you for underlining that. And, and especially important as we go into winter now. Mm. Yes, definitely. I mean, I think we don't know what's going to happen in the winter. It's, that's quite an interesting thing because if we're all doing social distancing and wearing masks, well, we have fewer coughs and colds or because coronavirus is around, will that enhance our opportunity to get, you know, coughs and colds? We, we don't really know, actually. But if everybody's wearing masks in, 
in closed spaces and on public transport and in shops. It should reduce the chances of just getting normal colds and influenza as well, because, okay. because that's what the mask is, is designed to do. Interesting. Fascinating. So good to talk to you, Doctor. Thank you very much for coming Thank on, you. Dr Sarah Pitt. Thank you. Next. As the country